Expedition 29 is a new experience in space for each of the members of the International Space Station crew. Mike Fossum is a native of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, who grew up in the small town of McAllen, Texas, in the Rio Grande Valley. We lived on the edge of town, and my brothers and friends and I would just get on our bikes and head out of town whenever we had the opportunity to, just to go explore, to go camping, to go hunting, to do uh, all those kind of things. And it was, for me, it was a big part of my childhood was to have the chance to get outdoors and, and do stuff on, on my own and also is hugely uh, active in the Boy Scouting program uh, down in the valley. After high school, Fossum went to Texas A&M University and joined the Corps of Cadets just so he could get a dorm room. But he ended up finding his calling and became a leader in the Corps while earning a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Fossum took his commission in the U.S. Air Force and after earning a Master's in Systems Engineering at the Air Force Institute of Technology, he was detailed to the Johnson Space Center in Houston to support space shuttle flight operations. After a few years, he took the advice of two fellow Air Force officers, astronauts Jerry Ross and Ellison Onizuka, who suggested he broaden his experience. Fossum was selected for the Air Force Test Pilot School, where he became a flight test engineer and served in several assignments before resigning from active duty and coming back to work for NASA in Houston. He worked as a systems engineer on several projects, including the prototype space station crew escape vehicle, the X-38, while earning a master's in physical science at the University of Houston Clear Lake, before being picked as an astronaut in 1998. Fossum completed three spacewalks on the second return to flight test mission in 2006, and three more on the 2008 shuttle flight that delivered the Kibo Laboratory to the International Space Station. Well, some things are worth taking the risk. There's a risk associated with it, and that's something that you have to face. But the, the kind of science that we give back in return is, is huge, and there's no other way to do this stuff, and that's why we do it. Russian Air Force Colonel Sergei Volkov was born in the Kharkov region of Ukraine and was inspired to become a pilot during the time his father was a flight instructor at a military school. When I was three years old, uh, he uh, took me to the uh, airfield uh, and uh, while he flew with cadets, his friends just uh, gave me a tour of the airfield and of course I was able to sit in the real fighter and that's uh, sort of how the dreams, dream appears actually. The family moved to Star City when Alexander Volkov became a cosmonaut. Young Sergei grew up with famous cosmonauts as neighbors, and when he saw how much time his father spent studying for exams while training for his three space flights, he decided there were more minuses than pluses to the cosmonaut's life. So after high school, he went to the Tambov Air Force Pilot School and graduated as a pilot engineer. He flew as an Air Force cargo pilot for two years, but when he felt he could do more for his country, Volkov applied to become a cosmonaut. He was selected as a candidate in 1997 and became the world's first second-generation space traveler in 2008 when he commanded the International Space Station's Expedition 17. We don't know what to expect when we reach the Mars surface. We don't know what, what we may expect from flying beyond the solar system. But we always wanted to know this, and this, I think, is inspiring us, and that's, we still continue to fly, and, uh, even it's really risky, risky. Dr. Satoshi Furukawa was born and raised in Yokohama, near Tokyo, and became interested in spaceflight as a very young boy. When I was five years old, I saw the, the first man's landing on the moon on TV, and I was impressed at it. That was one thing. And another thing was, uh, I was a fan of a uh, space hero called Ultra 7, which is a Japanese TV program about uh, 40 years ago. I was a big fan of that. That made me interested in space. He planned to go to college to study astronomy or space engineering. But when his uncle spoke to him about how rewarding he found it to be a physician, Furukawa changed his mind. He earned a doctorate of medicine at the University of Tokyo and spent five years working as a surgeon before shifting his focus to medical research. 
One night at work, he saw on television that the Japanese space agency was looking for new astronauts for the International Space Station and decided to try for it. He was picked for the program in 1999 and finished his Ph.D. in medical science from the University of Tokyo the next year. In 2001, he started advanced space station training in Japan. By mid-2004, he'd completed training as a Soyuz flight engineer in Star City and then moved to Houston to train with the 2004 class of NASA astronauts. About 100 years ago, uh, flying was a very dangerous thing. Uh, I think there was a discussion at that point uh, saying that uh, we don't need to fly uh, with the risks of, uh, with such risks. The ground tr transportations are good enough. The widening the activity area to outer space is an instinct for human beings. Human beings like to know the unknowns.